Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome to another edition of Live from My Mother's Basement with yours truly, comedian Mike Marino. Thank you everybody for tuning back in. We're doing this every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock here on the East Coast in the real basement that I grew up in. You know, a lot of people think that this is a set. Somebody actually called me and said, how did you build that bar? How did you build that set? And I didn't. This bar has been in this basement for, I don't know, could be 80 years. Some of the alcohol in this basement's been here for probably 150 years. I think they brought it in during Prohibition. It's called Italian bootleg or Italian moonshine. It's in the cement walls. But that's another story, and I don't want to talk about that. I actually have my alcohol beverage of choice tonight. I've been drinking Miller High Life. You know why? Because it's cheaper than Rolling Rock. Not that many people know about it anymore. Let me see who's writing into the show right now. Oh, nothing really important. I th I, my father lives next door. He's 84 years old. So if the phone has a text, I look for my dad right away because I'm an old school Italian kid. Anything happens to my family, we get in the game. That's something I want to talk about tonight on tonight's show too. There's a couple of teenagers out there that are really unhappy with their lives and they get... Uh, cyber bullied. I learned all about this thing called cyber bullying and I want to talk about that a little bit because there was no such thing as cyber bullying when I was a kid. There was a such thing as bullying. And you know what your parents said to you? Bully the fuck back. Punch him right in the face. Let him punch you. It doesn't really hurt. You punch him. It's done. When you get older, you'll probably be friends with that guy. You can do it. I did it. Let's get in the game and we'll talk about that. But I was talking about my, my drink of choice. Let me see who's writing into the show right now here on Facebook. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. The Cowboys are in right now. Oh, okay. I don't know what that means, but Dora, thank you very much for saying something that makes absolutely no sense to me. I will take in some questions in a little while. <clears throat> right now, I want to just talk about what's going on in my life, what's going on in the news, and we'll find out what's going on in everybody's life out there, and see if I can't bring some smiles to everybody's face tonight on the show, next week on the show, and I think the following week is going to be the Christmas show, then the following week after that would be the New Year's Eve show, and hopefully, 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 the so-called COVID-19 vaccination will be in everybody's arm, and we could be done with all of this fucking lock-up bullshit. And we can start performing and doing some great events and uh, having some fun around the world. So right now I'm going to pop this drink. Everybody pop a drink with me. This is Miller. How many people remember Miller? Miller beer. They used to have really great commercials. A lot of the commercials for the beer was done in the winter and the snow was popping up. It's me beeping. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. So when it's time to relax, one beer stands clear, beer after beer. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. I don't even know how I remember this shit. I can't remember what I'm supposed to talk about on the show, but I remember a commercial that came out in the 60s. Look at the head on that. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Isn't that nice? It's so cold. This is so cold, it came out of a refrigerator down here in the basement. I know you people have all seen it from the 1950s. This refrigerator gets shut off once a year. It runs the entire year. It gets shut off once a year to defrost it. You have to defrost it because the freezer gets so damn cold, it destroys everything that's in it. So you got to get the snow out. It's like digging a, an igloo. You dig out the igloo, you defrost it, and bada boom, this is what you get. My mother used to defrost it. My grandmother used to defrost it. How the hell do I get on subjects like a refrigerator when I have so much important shit I want to talk to? But if you have a 1950s refrigerator, enjoy it. My Miller beer is very, very cold. Hang out, folks. Keep on watching. I was supposed to have a guest on the show tonight, my friend from the uh, Instagram little series called Brothers from Brooklyn. They're really in Brooklyn. He didn't want to drive this far because here in New Jersey, 
I think there's a warning that snow might fall tonight. If snow falls tonight, great. We're all in quarantine anyway. Be nice to see the snow outside. In fact, if the snow fell outside, we can actually say that's why we're staying in the house because we're afraid. We're not even in quarantine. We're in igloo. So uh, that would be really cool. I saw them salting some of the roads already, which destroys roads. But uh, cheers, everybody. Wow, I hit that pretty hard. I was away this weekend. I can't say where I was because the police might come and get me. Maybe I was away away, but that tasted delicious. Very, very cold, old school, nothing added. It's beer, like a bud. I just heard somebody open and close that classic refrigerator, which is good news. Because my guest couldn't make it, but I do have a friend who knew to come by to hang out. He's got a lot of great things going on in his comedy career, and we're going to talk all about him. But I got to get some subject matter out before I bring him on the show. But it's, it's very nice and refreshing to know that I have that type of a friend that says, you know what, let me stop by Mike's and watch the show. And then all of a sudden realizes nobody's here tonight, it's just me. And I said, could you do me a favor? Can you come over and hang out on the show with me? Ooh, I'm burping. It's all right for me to burp. It's my show. And we'll talk a little bit about with him, with him <clears throat> in a moment. So let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. I got to mention the fact that the COVID-19, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, one of my favorite people in the entire world. I don't know if he'll, he'll appreciate me mentioning his name while we're here on the on the show. Is uh, my, my high school band teacher from back in the day. He actually saying he's putting a bottle of boiling water in his freezer because that is how you defrost the freezer. You got to take a pan, a big hot boiling pan of water, and you put it in the freezer. And I guess what is it called? The constantation, the condemnation. The condemnation, the, whatever it does to the, to the fucking, to the to the freezer, to the ice. What's the word I'm looking to the snow in your freezer? Condensation. It, it, it gets rid of it. So, um, thank you uh, <laughs> for saying that. I really appreciate that, and thank you so much, everybody, for writing in so fast right now. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, we'll ask this question later, but they're showing in the news that. People are already in line to get the COVID vaccine. So I guess that's fantastic news. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I had the flu shot a couple weeks ago. If the vaccine came knocking on my door, I'd say, yes, I'll take it. Let me do it. Dr. Tom. Yeah, it melts. It. Now everybody's saying it melts. It does. It melts. Now, if anybody needs a great dentist, Dr. Tom right now is writing in. Make sure you say hello to him. So I would run and I would get that COVID test. And I would show the world on my show that I'm fine and I'm ready to get back in the world and maybe we can go back to some live performances. Um, I want to thank everybody in Arizona. If you're watching the show, I went out to Stand Up Live in Arizona on Sunday night and did a really big show that was presented by Casanova Brothers Pizza. The Casanova Brothers Pizza is fantastic. And the two Casanova brothers, Anthony and Michael, are producing a movie. And that movie is about, um, what's the roller skating thing when people used to beat the crap out of each other on the roller rink? You remember? Roller derby. Roller derby. It's, it's called Rollers. And it's about the roller derby. And I'm going to be playing the owner of the roller derby team. A roller derby team. <laughs> so... I, I'm pretty happy that that happened, and that's going to happen in April of next year, so good for me. And they also have me starring in a TV series called That's So Boulder. So let's hope when this year's over and we start next year, I go right on to the TV screen and start making some TV projects. But right now, we do have some shows that we're going to do to finish up the rest of the year, especially this coming Thursday night here 
in the state of New Jersey. Folks, a lot of people don't want to go out because of COVID, and I understand that. And if you're uncomfortable and uh, you're afraid, stay home. Don't go out. Don't risk it. You don't want to put a jinx on yourself, and you don't want to get it. Everybody knows I had it. It lasted two weeks. I beat it. The massive problem that I had was coughing. I was coughing all the time, but I got rid of the COVID. It went away. I'm 100% back to normal. I got checked. Don't have it. Got rechecked. Don't have it. But that doesn't mean somebody uh, in your family has it, doesn't have it, or any of the above. We all watch the news. We all know what to watch out for. So this Thursday night, the show that we're going to do is going to be done with social distancing. So a place that would normally hold 300 people is only going to hold 80. And it's great food. I guarantee you great fun. You can wear a mask while you watch the show. Pull the mask down. Put food in your mouth. Put your mask back up. Nobody wants to watch you eat anyway. And you know what's good about having a mask on while you're eating? You can't spit on the other person your food. So that's a good thing. And we're going to be doing that. And my friend who's going to come and sit next to me for a little while and chit-chat with me on the show is going to be in that show. So I'll have him talk about all that stuff. And uh, we also want to do a nice uh, shout-out to one of the greatest entertainers of all time. I hope you people are listening. Unfortunately, 40 years ago, one of the Fab Four, John Lennon of the Beatles, was killed in New York City. That was the day the music died as far as I'm concerned. Sure, the other guys too, of course. I forgot that. But I, was a lot, well, I don't even know if I was born at that time. But John Lennon getting killed in New York was the shock heard round the world. And tonight, on a lot of different radio shows, they're playing all his music from his own, his music with Yoko Ono, and of course all his legendary music with the Beatles. Makes you wonder what would go on if he was alive today and he never got shot. You know, would he be President of the United States? Would he still be making music? Would be he be on Broadway? Would the Beatles have gotten back together in their 60s? Could you imagine that? Imagine the Fab Four writing and singing songs when they hit 60, 65, maybe even 70. Maybe they got back together like the Rolling Stones in their 90s. I'm kidding, it's a joke. But that would have been super cool. But anyway... They're playing his music on the radio tonight, probably almost on every channel. I've, if you've been watching the advertising I've been doing for tonight's show, I actually have it on an old Victrola, and it's cool because it's coming out in really great sound on a Victrola that's, I guess, from the 1950s as well. So anyway, uh, let's have some fun. A friend of mine in the area, a fellow comedian, a fellow entertainer, a fellow actor, who lives here in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, decided that we're going to do uh, another show together because we've done a few shows together, mostly stand-up comedy. We get together every Saturday morning and we hang out in town here in Scotch Plains at the Farmer's Market, causing some trouble, eating pork roll, egg and cheese on a hard roll at one of my favorite places called The Highlander that's been around since 1918. It's a joke, people. It hasn't been around that long. But uh, they call him... Mr. Direct, his real name is Marklin Johnson, and he's here right now. Say hello to Marklin, Mr. Direct Johnson, who happened to come down and hang out. You know what's great about this town, ladies and gentlemen? We don't lock our doors. <laughs> and if you're really good friends with your buddy, he just walks on in. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey! It's on and it's for sale. Hey, everybody! Hi! <clears throat> What's going on, Mike? Right now, you could probably, or, or we wish we could hear a nice round of applause, but but you kind of can't. Hey, hand me that thing over there, that clipboard. This cl oh, we need a clipboard. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, wait. There you go. Um, Laura Brunetta gave me this as a gift, and I think this is just super cool. So let's do this. Marklin, Mr. Direct Johnson, take two. 
Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right, What's going go. on, Mike? How you doing tonight? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm, I'm great. I'm glad, glad to be here. Down. Live on, your, on the mother's basement, from your mother's basement, not my mother's. But this is beautiful. I like this. He's been down here so many times, comes down to watch the show, uh, hang out, do some of the, uh, <laughs> what do you call it, technical shit. I help with tech. I'm a technical guru. <laughs> It's, it's unbelievable. I'm like, can you hear me? Check, check, check. And he makes sure that it happens, which is really, really great. And I appreciate that. And also my producing team out in Los Angeles, the social media manager who helps me do all of this fantastic stuff. Without my, my team in California, this would not be possible. And we're actually going and growing and getting bigger. And uh, the show's got more and more sponsors, and we're having a lot more fun. So uh, Marklin and I are going to do a show this Thursday night here in the state of New Jersey. So why don't you go ahead and tell them about it? Oh, my God. First of all, I want to say thank you for being willing to headline the show for me. The show is going, it's Mr. Direct Presents Dinner and Comedy. So you get a dinner, you get to eat, and you get comedy. How often do you want to get that now in the time of COVID? It's at the Primavera Regency in Sterling, New Jersey, the big ballroom that sits 95 people. So there's going to be social distancing. So Go online, go to eventbrite.com, look up the name Mr. Direct. You can find it there. Get yourself some tickets. We want to not pack the place in, but we want people, we want people there. <laughs> Normally we're like pack the place in. Let's get everybody in there. No, we want enough people in there to have a decent show, which is gonna be a phenomenal show anyway. I'm hosting, Mike is headlining. We have A Marie, and we have another friend of mine. Daniel Nadir, he's going to open up. He's funny. He uh, passed at Broadway, so he's a decent comic. We're going to have fun. And what I'm going to be doing is shamelessly plugging my book. <laughs> Lessons from a Shit Talker. Well, let's talk about that, man. <laughs> I'm going to be shamelessly plugging my book, Lessons from a Shit Talker. So it's going to be we can, fun. We're going to tell everybody where to come and see us on Thursday night throughout the show. Yes. But uh, Marklin not only is a great entertainer, he does have his own podcast, like what we're doing right here, right now. Why don't you tell them where they can actually see that? If you look up Mr. Direct Just Real, M-I-S-T-E-R. Matter of fact, if you find his logo, but if you type in Mr. Direct and Google it, you can actually find it. I have a Facebook page, Mr. Direct Just Real, and all my pages, all my uh, shows are on there. I do uh, Monday morning, uh, Monday motivational, motivational Mondays, Wacky Wednesdays, Sunday Coffee. I wasn't born to do anything else but talk. That's it. I, talk and entertain people is what I do. I'm good at it. <laughs> talk and entertain. So that's how he comes up with a book, Lessons <laughs> from a Shit Talker. <laughs> now listen, being an author is a big deal. I'd like to write a book myself someday, and I think if I could get my, my head out of my ass, I'm going to go ahead and write a book. I would love to do that. But he did it. I mean, you look fantastic on the cover. And I big like up to look. Estelle. Estelle took that picture. Oh, is that right? Yes. Big up to Estelle for taking this picture because I couldn't look as good as this picture looks. I, I, I love the way he talks. <laughs> for you straight up white people, <laughs> big ups means kudos. <laughs> He's laughing. Let it go. I'm, I'm, I'm working on I'm working on the cul-de-sac uh, language. <laughs> I'm trying to get the cul-de-sac language going. <laughs> big ups to Estelle. Um, Estelle Masry, right? Yes, Estelle Masry. She took that picture, and odd, odd enough, uh, my day job, the lady went out, the, uh, when I got the day job, because I had to get a 9 to 5 because of COVID, she went searching for my picture. She didn't ask me for my picture. This is the picture that everybody sees, because they send the picture for it, because I'm going to people's businesses, so that they're not weirded when I walk through the door. This is the picture that they're sending to everybody. Oh, sorry. This is the picture that they're sending to everyone. So everywhere I walk in, people are like, ooh, are you a model? Like, no, this is not model-esque. You should say yes. But she yes. made me look like a model. You should say yes. <laughs> so big ups, big props, big con. Uh, yes. To Estelle Masry, who's a phenomenal photographer here in the state of New Jersey. She usually takes pictures of rock and roll stars. Uh, she did my pictures when I was at the Paramount. Yes. And now she has a great cover with this young man. So tell us about... FYI, there's a couple of shout-outs for you, Mike, in the book. Oh, I'm shouted out? Um, yes, I gave you a shout-out. Um, I gave you an acknowledgement. The first time I was ever able to host a show, Mike plugged me in to uh, host a show, which in this industry, when someone of Mike's level is nice enough 
to actually bring you on board and show you the ropes, it's a blessing because a lot of people don't want to show you the ropes. And Mike was gracious enough to say, hey, I have a show. Come on, introduce me. This is what you're going to do. And I did pretty well. And it let me know that I was kind of in the right atmosphere. So I have to say a lot of the things that I still do, like even doing this dinner and comedy show, which shameless plug, this Thursday, go to Eventbrite, pick it up, uh, get your ticket, Eventbrite, Thursday. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for you because you keep pushing me and saying, you've got this, you can do it. And not that many people, this is a cutthroat business, and a lot of people want to pull you away and just distract you and don't, don't want you to do what you want to do. And if they see that you have talent, they try to cut you at the knees. Not you. You're gracious and you help people, and I appreciate that. So you got a couple of uh, <clears throat> shout-outs in the book, Lessons from a Shit Talker. <laughs> you know, it must be great to actually have the patience to sit down and write a book and put your thoughts on paper. I mean, this is really, really cool. I uh, hope this copy is for me. You could sign it over to me unless you need to make Why some does money everybody on... want me to sign the copy? I have poor handwriting. Oh, wow. Whoever typed this Dominic, got good. Can I can I talk to Dominic real quick? Sure. Dominic, the book is about pursuing your dreams and how I was uh, working an IT job and bored. And I was thinking, this is it. I'm going to be in a cubicle for the rest of my life. And I've always wanted to be on a radio. I've always wanted to be a talent. And people told me to shut up. And what they used to say to me when I was at the bar cracking jokes or with my friends cracking jokes, oh, he's just a shit talker. Hence the title, Lessons from a Shit Talker. It's about following your dreams and the lessons I've learned stumbling along the way. And most people write the, write the book and they're successful and I'm making $50 million. But do you have to be $50 million to be successful? You could be an everyday guy. You could be Mike. Mike, Mike is a successful entertainer. It's you don't need to make all that money, but it's hoping to give people a little bit of something to say, I can do this too. Because none of us are that far away from achieving what we want if we just put our minds to it. Man, that was a good pitch. I gotta write that down. That was fantastic. <laughs> I like the part about me being successful. That was fantastic. You are no the <laughs> success is in the mind of the beholder, you know, because yes. what is success? People will say to me from time to time. Don't you think maybe you should be even bigger? And I'm like, you know what? If I can stay making a living at what I do, I'll be fine. Just leave me alone. Especially after COVID. COVID humbled a lot of people, boy. So if we can go back to the lives that we had before this shit went down, yes. I think a lot of people would be like, you know, okay, this is cool. Yes. I don't need nothing more. Just let me be healthy and let me be happy. Uh, maybe I, I would like to achieve... Staying in the entertainment business, yes. maybe I like to achieve writing a book like you did because they think this is cool. It looks badass. You sell these after shows, you sell them on the internet, and now you're a published writer. Which I still can't believe. Um, a friend of mine saw this script that I wrote for this, and it wasn't a script. She was going through all my notes in my Google Drive because I needed help with some stuff, and she said, "You know, you have a book." I didn't realize I had a book. She was like, "You have a hundred pages about your story." She said, let me edit it, work with it a little bit, and see what I could do. And that's what came from it. So I ended up an author out of nowhere. Because, you know, as a, as a comic, you have to write a lot. Yeah. So I was writing a lot of stuff out just for the sake of it, like different stories and stuff. And I wasn't writing them to be jokes. I was just writing out stuff. And I was like, oh, this is a lesson I learned. So it turned out pretty well. And I'm a... Uh, Life lessons. I'm... I, I'm I, I'm author. really an author. He's I really author. don't get it. I'm an author. You're an author. Yeah, I guess. I don't understand why people want me to sign it, though. That is your copy. That's a copy for you. Because everybody wants to know that they were giving, given a book by the person who wrote the book. Okay. And to prove that, when you show it to someone, your name has to be in it. Oh, and FYI, so it's on book. Kindle and Amazon right now. You can get it on Kindle and Amazon Go out, check it out, get yourself a copy, share it with people, enjoy it. It is my gift to this world. If anything happens to me, I've left a legacy. And that's what my whole, my dream is about leaving a legacy. I, I, I have to know, people have to know I was here. That's what it's about. And my dream is about leaving my G.I. Joe doll <laughs> to someone who would value the value of the G.I. Joe doll. Our next subject matter is regifting. It's Christmas time. Not everybody has a lot of money. A lot of people, because of COVID, are broke. 
So why not re-gift? But the thing is, where do you draw the line on a re-gift? What do you think? So here's where we'll take in some answers, I mean some questions, where I think you draw the line on re-gifting. Because I would never re-gift this G.I. Joe doll because my parents gave it to me when I was a child. And when they bought it, it was $7. Now it's worth $7,000. So Lord. I'm not re-gifting the doll. But did you ever re-gift? Uh, you ever play that uh, game, the white ele the white elephant gift or whatever it is? And, <laughs> and you draw, and everybody goes in, and they get the weirdest like gift. Yeah, I've regifted those things because I've gotten like candles. Why do I have a candle called love? What's a love candle? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what is regifting? Now here, I think a regift would be somebody gives you a shirt, but you don't like the shirt that much. But you know somebody who would, so you keep it wrapped. Or tape it back up, change the to and the from, you know, to Uncle Joe, mm -hmm. from me, and you hand it to the next person. Yes. But do you tell them, hey, it's a re-gift. Somebody gave it to me, I'm giving it to you. Or do you keep your mouth shut? That's a great question. What would you, what would you say? Can I say hello to somebody real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I want to say hello real quick to Lady Rose. Rose Ann, I can't, what is that, Muscarella? Keenan. Rose, is it Rose Ann? Muscarella. Muscarella Keenan. Lady Rose, what's going on? It's so good to see you. Thank you for chiming in on live from my mother's basement with Mike Marino. <laughs> Her uh, niece that passed away went to high school with me, and we became really good friends. She's like family to me, so she checks in on me every now and then. Thank She's you good, for watching the show, Rose. Yes. We appreciate that. So, uh, regifting. Uh, well, wait a minute now. I don't have Lionel trains anymore. However, I have a Lionel train, uh, um, like a bus stop. And at that bus stop is a farm. And at the farm is all the cows and the sheep and uh, some other stuff. It's probably worth a couple hundred bucks. And I have some train track and crossing things, bells. But that's what I have there. I have a lot of G.I. Joe dolls and clothes from the 80s. That's why I'm asking... Where do you draw the line on regifting? Is it have to be a gift that you were given recently for this Christmas? A Christmas a year ago? Ten years ago? How about me? I have clothes from the 80s. <laughs> Can I regift something from the 80s? Only if it's fashion. If it's if it's trending in fashion, yes. Well, these are pants we wore at the beach. <laughs> You still got your pants. For Look at that. <laughs> These were the baggies that you wore when you went to the gym. Are those Cavaricis? No. Well, they look like Cavaricis. Look. Okay. Now, these pants you wore to the gym because in New Jersey in the 80s, you only lifted weights from the waist up. So this made it look like you had big, big, big legs. And that's that pair. I wouldn't even sell these for like thousands of dollars because you ain't never going to get them again. And I wore these too. I could prove it. I got pictures of me wearing this shit. But is this a re-gift? If your Uncle Vinny still wears this type of clothing, yes, you could give it to your Uncle Vinny because he still wear that. <laughs> Look at these things. How cool is this shit? <laughs> smells like the attic. <laughs> you, I don't want to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> MC Hammer. Can you, MC <laughs> Hammer. <love> those. <laughs> these are, is that a re-gift? Yes. Anybody? It's it's a re-gift. Dan... Big ups to Daniel Cotullo. He graduated high school, uh, Scotch Plains. He says we're playing with dolls. He, he doesn't understand it. That's the uh, producer I was telling you about. Look, it's like somebody said, I turned this on and you two are playing yeah. with a doll. <laughs> I turned it on too late. <laughs> we we got to watch this shit from the beginning. We don't know what we're doing. Wait, use those pants to make a music video of 80s music. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. There you I'm go. still walking on my shirt from Mr. Direct. Waiting She's still waiting shirt. on her uh, T-shirt, the Mr. Direct Real Talk T-shirt. I I had a whole bunch of them. You'll get that eventually. Don't talk about that on his show. No, no, it's okay because <laughs> he wore one a few times, but he'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll regift it. He's gonna regift re it. it to you. <laughs> Look at somebody said we should wear those pants for the show on Thursday. <laughs> I, if if you go and get your Brian, you go and get your ticket right now. We will walk out in those pants. <laughs> Brian, you buy a ticket to the show Thursday night, and we're gonna both come out going. <laughs> Can't touch it. 
Hey, touch this. Hey, Todd. Come on, I'm better than you. No, on, you hey. are doing it better for me. You gotta, no, I need the feet movement. You gotta move your feet side to side real quick. No, I think, I, Brian, you buy a ticket, it's there. I will wear those. I'll rock those. <laughs> he was great, man. Howard oh. was the best. Oh, hey, right. No, until he said it, he could dance better than Michael Jackson. Then I had to let him go. Yeah, for sure. All right, so but, um, rules are regifting. Can't look used. If it's old, tell them you got some authentic vintage for them. Nah, that's not regifting because someone has to give it to you, and you, and you give it right away. That's the true form of regifting. And I think it's supposed to be a gift that did not get used. How about how about four years? If it's within four years, you can properly <laughs> regift it. If it's in four years, and there's, I think if you if somebody gives you something you can't use, but you know it's usable, you can regift it. Doesn't make a difference. How about that? Yeah. Um, I think we sold two tickets because Brian Noonan can't come to the show, but he said he'll buy two tickets for somebody else. Imagine that. His two tickets to see MC Hammer and some white dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, touch am this. I gonna have to get a am I gonna have to get a high top wig? Remember that? <laughs> and some glasses. Can somebody re gift a high top wig, please? <laughs> if you get the wig, I will wear it, just so you know. <laughs> hey Lou from Uncle Louie, holy shit. That's Lou from Uncle Louie, one of the greatest comedy teams in the stand-up world. The Uncle Louie Variety Show. I think it's the Uncle Louie Variety Show.com. Two of the funniest guys. And um, Louie um, does um, a character from, from back in the day, an old-school mm -hmm. Italian guy, with some of the funniest comedy on the Internet right now because we're all locked up because of COVID, so I'll say it that way. But that is... One great comedy team. The Uncle Louie Variety Show. Just plug right here on Mike Marino Live from my mother's basement with Mr. Direct here. We're talking about our Thursday night show and regifting. What is the limit to regifting? Can you regift food? Now, here's a good question. I mean, wait I, a minute now. I've tasted some, uh, hold on. I think I've tasted some fruitcake that was regifted a few times. I gotta tell you that one. Wait a minute, what's what? <laughs> regifting is great for a white elephant party. What I was party. talking about earlier, the white elephant party. I don't know what that is. That's like when you put people like I, I'm looking for something around here, but you've got a whole bunch of nice looking knickknacks. So okay, so somebody will take this and wrap it and just put it like in a box or just something. People, some people will draw numbers and then you go grab it. And it's like, okay, I took, I drew the number three, and then I get this. Isn't and that, that, isn't that called a grab bag? Sort of, but it's the same thing. White elephant party, it's the same thing. I thought a grab bag was when a bunch of people buy a bunch of shitty items, they put them in a box, you pull what you pull, and you go home with something stupid. That's a white a, elephant party. I thought a white elephant party is when a guy like me goes to an all-black party, <laughs> and they're like, look at the white elephant in the room. He's looking for marinara. <laughs> I will say I didn't hear about the white there. elephant. Come on, man. That's I didn't hear fun. about the white elephant party until I moved to Minnesota, and it was a black family that introduced me to the white elephant party. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Well, listen, <laughs> we want to do something on the show that we did last week with our friend Mr. Frankie Time, and I wanted to do that with Marklin. He's not aware that I'm going to do this. Let's take uh -oh. a few more questions. Love you, brother. I love you too, man. There's only one fruit cake. In the world that just gets passed around. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fucking hate fruitcake. Fruitcake sucks. You know what? If you bring fruitcake to somebody's house, you're an asshole. You better off coming with nothing. I don't even talk to people when they like my aunt love it to death. Lady Rose loves you, man. Cause I love Miss Oh, Lady Rose is Lady Rose is like the best ever. I I will tell you, my aunt used to send me, God rest her soul, she used to send us a fruitcake every damn year. Okay, every year, and for we never, no one cut a slice out of it, like never. So it was like, are you just accepting it because you want to be nice? At some point, don't you just say, you know, we don't eat that shit. <laughs> we don't eat it. We're Why just, do you send it? We're just being nice. Basically, I don't know. I was thinking that maybe it would be fun to re-gift food. So let's suppose I have a party, or you have a party. And I come over with a six-pack of beer that nobody likes. I drink one beer for myself, but I got six left over, and I gave it to him. Well, you wouldn't have six No, 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 no. I gave you the gift. 
Okay. So I give you the six pack, but I take one to drink for me because I like it. Now he has six beers that he don't like. Five. It, five. <laughs> I didn't go to school. <laughs> I didn't even write a book. Stop shit talking. <laughs> so now he has five beers that he don't like. Can he go to another Christmas party with those five beers and say, hey, Merry Christmas? Can I drop the F bomb? Go ahead. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> He gave me permission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't drink it. Yeah. Yeah, why not? How come you guys are not wearing the ugly Christmas sweaters? That's the going on thing. Because we're trying to sell fucking products. Good, basically. I'm trying to sell these shirts. Why do you think I wear it every Tuesday night? You already switched out to Merino 2024. You didn't know that? <laughs> That's right. I got four years to sell this shit. Hey, my thing paused. Oh, uh, back there, there it is. <laughs> Was the beer a Miller? Yes, you should have chimed in in the beginning of the show. Um, yeah, we don't wear ugly shit. Good jersey, education. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you should be able to re-gift, but at reasonable uh, limits. And I think food, well, why not re-gift some food? So like I said, a six-pack, he doesn't like the five beers. Isn't he allowed to go to someplace else and give those beers to somebody? Yes. How about a pizza? Now, let's suppose that I brought a pizza to your house. I had one slice, but you didn't like pepperonis on the pizza, and mm -hmm. it's on all the pizza. Is it okay for him to go to another party with those slices of pizza? If, I... it's, if it's the same night, yes. If it's the same night, yes. If it's the next day, no. That's my belief. Look at this. Makes... Hides the double chin. What does that mean? I have no clue. Dave Crankle, you might want to rewrite <laughs> that. English, do you speak it? She only drank vodka. <laughs> Who? I, I have no clue. I'm from Jersey, so I can pick on the education. I had a Russian client that would regift me whiskey every year, Canadian club. That was Dominic. Client that would regift me whiskey every year. Yeah, and she well, only hey. drank because she only drank vodka. That's what it was. So she regift the whiskey because she only drank vodka. Oh, all right then. Uh, I think you should regift alcohol. Cause what if you have a bottle of great whiskey, you don't like it? What are you gonna do with it? But Wait. see, that's different because you're not tasting it. Well, you tried it. Yeah, no, you had a couple, couple glasses. Well, don't they use whiskey to sterilize a lot of things? So technically speaking, it's okay to regift that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wh whiskey could last for years anyway. Don't they sell like a hundred year old scotch? Masks hides double the double chin. chin. Okay. Mask hides the double chin. You know, don't talk your text. <sighs> Write it. Masks hide a double chin. Who who regifts pizza, especially in New Jersey? <laughs> yes, booze is the best re-gift, isn't it? Yes, there you go. You just put it in a different bag. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we re-gift masks? <laughs> Here, this one worked really good until I got it. Yes. <laughs> you try it. Yeah, I don't need That's this anymore. That's fucked up. I don't need it anymore. You go for it. Nothing better than a Brooklyn pizza. Yeah, Jersey pizza. Yeah. We're Jersey boys. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's a Brooklyn lady. I'm on the <laughs> elliptical. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's what it is. Well, then get off the elliptical and hide your chin. Okay, so we went over that question and answer. Now we got to move on. We also were talking about, before we started the show tonight, Lori Lachlan, who's in prison for greasing, the way we talk about it, greasing uh, college important people so her kids could go to school. Yep. Right? Oh, my. The, I will tell you this. Not to get political, because this is your show, so we're going to keep it out of politics. But I saw someone say to me one time, who cares? People do it all the time. Some people get scholarships for no reason. And I was a little caught off guard because it's illegal. That's why. Like, if something's illegal, it's illegal. The law is the law. It makes no difference who you are. You got caught. You broke the law. End of it. She deserves to go to jail. And then she hired a, what was it? A prison coach. Yes. That's what we were looking to talk about. Do you think you could hire a prison coach? I didn't even know that there's a such thing as a prison 
coach. First time in the history of going to jail, Lori Loughlin, a famous actress from Full House. Yes, and Fuller House. Fuller House. And a lot of movies, Lifetime TV shows and stuff like this. She Walmart. has to go to prison, but she looks into a prison coach who coaches her through the daily whatnots of being in jail. Could you imagine a mass murderer saying, I need a coach. I need a coach. I'm going away for life. Does anybody know anybody? I need somebody good and expensive. <laughs> Remember uh, Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart did a movie called Get Hard. Oh, yeah? And that's what it was about. He was an uh, oh, really? executive. He was um, an executive in a financial company. He was taking the fall for some illegal activity. So he thought Kevin Hart was this hardened criminal. And he hired him to teach him how to be ready for jail. If you get it, if you guys get a chance to see it, it's actually a funny movie. Low key funny, but it's funny. Well, she got a prison <laughs> coach. Imagine guys like us going, "Can I get a coach? I need a little bit of help. I don't know why my my uh yeah oh there it is. It'll going keep going back on over there. Course. They should feed her a fruitcake. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta eat fruitcake for the next eat two months. Fruitcake. <laughs> For the next two months. Here's the best way to go through prison. Have some fruitcake. <laughs> it's not an original. It's regifted. <laughs> it's a regift. It's a regift. <laughs> oh, you can't make that up. All right. Well, listen. Um, here's some more trivia that I wanted to talk about on the show. Sure. In this house, we have the Christmas tree all set up. There's a lot of antiques set up around the house from my grandmother and my mom. And I like to set things up that way. So it reminds me of Christmas Past. Just like that movie, Christmas Past. When Christmas to me was a lot more fun. You got together with your family. The kids sat in the corner. The family sat at the table, uh, at the big table. And you looked at your family and said, I wonder who's going to pass away so I can graduate to the big table. Because that was the only way you moved up when you were a kid. Somebody had to go. Well... Nobody's around anymore. It's very quiet down here in the basement. I'm very lucky I could have my friends come over and hang out and have some fun. But when people do come over the house, we always had a cookie jar. The cookie jar was supposed to be for everybody to sample mommy's homemade cookies. Christmas Since cookies? then, Christmas cookies. That was left for Santa Claus with the cookies and milk. Now, I still have the same cookie jar, but since I don't know how to bake, I put candy in there so another question is where do you draw the line on how many candies the person coming over is allowed to take i have candy canes which are the new kind of candy canes these are candy canes by jolly rancher do you like blue them? and green i do like them. so do you like the candy that you put in there yes Oh, well, if you like the candy you put in there, you hide the whole entire candy jar. Yeah, well, <laughs> so well, that too. But I also know where I put my candy. Okay. In the stocking. Okay. Stocking stuffers. But in here is expensive chocolates. Uh, these. Lindor. Lindor. It's like $8 for three of them. They're delicious. So mm -hmm. I put them in the jar. People come by. They know that there's candy in the jar. When do you say to your visitor, like my mother, get your hand out of the jar? <laughs> How many candies? Try one, bro. They're unbelievable. Get your hand out of the jar. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Oh, you got the red one. All right, he got the red one. And here is the gold one, red. And then there's a blue one. And these are killer. There's no way you can't have one of these without making the face of how good this is. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. This is really good chocolate. See that shit? You good feel, chocolate. You feel your blood slowing down? <laughs> My artery just yeah. seized up. <laughs> now, that's so good, you know he's going to put his hand in that jar again. Look at his head. Uh-huh. I'll go to the bathroom. <laughs> if I, you can. If no, I I'm went good. to the bathroom, good. take the white one. No, I'm good. <laughs> It's white chocolate. <laughs> I'm good. That's so fucked up. You people better be laughing because we're laughing. I don't care. Oh he comes God. in the back door, man, and that's a good thing. You people know that when you come in the back door of somebody's house, that means you know the family. 
If you come in the front door, you got to knock. If you come in the back door, you just come in because you're family. You know, I can hear him walking around my house, and I'll be like, bring me a Coke. <laughs> right? So why are you up there? Because I know he's there. Get me something. But anyhow, so we got that. I want the Markland to taste that candy because it's delicious, right? Now I'm going to have him taste something else. And let's see if we can't be a uh -oh. little. We're going to be stereotypical, all right? Uh-oh. I'm going to be stereotypical Italian. He could be stereotypical whatever he wants in this little scene. And I hope he does it, because it would make me feel really good. Now, here is a, I think they call them a snifter. It's a shot glass, but sometimes they call them a, a snifter, I think. And here's one for me. Now, around Christmas time, and we did this last show, too, we like to have eggnog. Eggnog is delicious. But we, you got see, some, see the face he's you making? You got some Hennessy to put with that? All right, he did it. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask him. He did it on his own. You got some Hennessy to and put with that? And the answer is, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I ain't going to leave out my guest. <laughs> my mother always said, make sure you got 7-Up in case somebody comes over. You never know what your visitor's going to like. And I ain't drinking that without no Hennessy. I know it says Southern Comfort, but, but this you got to put some Hennessy in egg there. This is eggnog. Uh oh. And eggnog is a delicious, delicious. If you had this with nothing in it, you'd love it, right? But we're gonna give ourselves some holiday cheer, right? When what I was younger, you? I didn't drink eggnog, but as I got older, as long as it got, as long as it had a little bit of liquor in it, liquor. it was perfect. Now I never had Hennessy. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's whiskey, right? Yes. All right. So this is a whiskey. This is a whiskey. Hennessy. Oh, that's Hennessy. Genesee? No, that's Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee. Yeah. Okay, so which one do you want? That one? Maybe that one? Nah, that what, one. Whatever that one is. We good. I'm not going to drink it all. Just whatever you put a splash in. It's a splash. Lady Rose, it was so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. I will talk to you before the beginning, of, before Christmas. I'll talk to you. Thank you. Uh-oh. This is how we're going to sign off the show. Uh-oh. Post. Now you don't have to drink the whole thing. You're supposed to sip it. Sip it. He ain't met me. Happy up and coming holidays. <laughs> Damn. Happy holidays to you guys. Oh, that is so tasty. That is so tasty. Look at how beautiful this is. This is so nice, right? Oh, my girlfriend's home. <laughs> Right back after this commercial break. <laughs> Damn. I don't even know if they know what you said. <laughs> oh my God. All right. All right, listen, we've been chatting for about 50 minutes. I think it's time to get going. Hey, one. Lori, how are you? Nice to see you. You missed everything. That's all right. It goes in reruns. <laughs> Folks, if you enjoyed tonight's little podcast live from my mother's basement, we hope that you'll keep on watching. Every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, I broadcast live here on Facebook. I broadcast up there live on Instagram. And then it replays all the time on YouTube. You can watch this on YouTube with 100 and I think 58 different episodes live from my mother's basement. It also goes on to iTunes, Google, Spotify, Anchor, ItalianAmericanRadio.com. Pick your favorite podcast app and watch the show, listen to the show, enjoy the show. You could also go to my, uh, my website, which is MikeMarino.net. And we are selling masks. I sell masks that say, Make America Italian Again. They come in two colors, white and black. <laughs> <laughs> come on, people. Here, here's one for you. Ah! <laughs> Give me that. I got to sell that. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, said, what's going on? It's good to see you. Oh, my girlfriend's home. <laughs> <laughs> you go to MikeMarino.net. You can pick up some masks. You can pick up T-shirts that say Marino 2024. I also have the original T-shirt that says Make America Italian Again. It comes in hoodies. It comes in uh, tracksuit pants and sweatpants. 
anything you want, you can write to me. I want to thank my sponsors, the, uh, what is these guys again? I forgot to talk about this. The, the Casanova brothers out there in Phoenix, Arizona. They gave me some glasses. Uh, I want to thank uh, Regina's Pizza out in, uh, where the hell are these guys? Uh, Akron, Ohio. Ohio, Regina's Pizza. I want to thank the Hero Kings in Nutley, New Jersey. And I want to thank my special guest who was not scheduled to come on the show, but he came down to hang out with me, and now he's in a hurry. He gave, he's got a great book out. It's called Lessons from a Shit Talker. His name is Marklin Johnson. They call him Mr. Direct. Let's get it right. And I have a theme song. <laughs> so do I. It's by, by MC Hammer. <laughs> Oh my God, that is so crazy. Uh, Thank you so much for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. Listen, Thursday night. Those of you in New Jersey, come out Thursday night at the Primavera Regency in Sterling, New Jersey. Go to eventbrite.com, type in Mr. Direct, M I S T E R D I R E C T. Don't try to do the M R dot direct. Spell out Mr. Direct as one word. You will find this event. Purchase a ticket, purchase two tickets, purchase five tickets. We want to fill the place in, but we're doing social distancing. So don't think you're going to be on top of somebody and sitting next to some stranger you don't know. There's a cash bar. You have your choice of dishes. When you go on the site, you'll be able to see what dishes you want to actually eat. They have salmon. They have chicken. They also have some sort of a pasta, which I'm not surprised because it's an Italian place. So they got some pasta. Go figure that. It's some sort of red sauce. (laughs) Have you ever noticed that Italian people, if they have some red sauce and and garlic and onions in the house, they can make anything delicious? That's a new bit I'm working on. But we'll talk about that later. Come out Thursday night. Check out your headliner, Mike Marino. He's going to be there live doing his thing, making you laugh. I'm just hosting, so I'm only going to talk for five seconds. But you guys are going to have fun. Please come out. Purchase the book. Lessons from a shit talker. It's on Kindle and on Amazon. Check it out. A lot of good positive feedbacks. Pick up a copy. I'm so humbled and grateful to be on the show with Mike. And I'm so humbled and grateful to see you guys enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, we got to go and get going. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight's show. We had a lot of fun down here tonight. We love each other. We care about each other. We have a lot of fun together. Nothing makes us upset because we're entertainers. We want to make you happy, so we make each other happy. G.I. Joe's happy. They'll be sitting on the shelf. That's the Italian elf on a shelf. <laughs> it's a elf on a shelf. You touch him, he goes, hey, hey, get your hands off me. <laughs> Remember, make America Italian again. You know the motto. You don't know nothing. You don't see nothing. You don't say nothing. And how do I end every single one of my broadcasts by always saying the same thing? You don't know nothing? No, no. Don't take no shit. Oh. You don't take no shit. Don't take no shit. Don't take no shit. That's what I was going to say. All right, here we go. Ready? And you don't, don't take. Don't let, you know what? Give me the clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. That shot Ready? got to us. Don't, don't take, take no shit from nobody. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying watching my podcast live from my mother's basement. We're having a lot of fun and I'm going to have a lot of great guests on the show in the future. So if you like it, hit like. You could also leave a comment. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch other funny videos. And you could also listen to my podcast on your favorite podcast app like Spotify and iTunes.